Hi, Stephen from Owner Disso. Well, as I mentioned a while back, you know, the Intel 10th Gen Comet Lake H CPUs and the uh, NVIDIA Supercards are upon us. You know, sometime later this month in April, we will be seeing them in, in laptops. And I did mention this when I was at CES and also during my PAX uh, coverage. So this video is basically to sum up what, you know, these entail, what I personally think of them, and uh, perhaps, uh, you know, what to new laptops on the horizon for Gigabyte. First off is the 10th gen Intel CPUs that are still being made out of their 14 nanometer process. And even though Intel have milked this for quite a while now, you know, to be fair, they do keep on tweaking them to give us more cores and higher clock rates whilst maintaining a 45 watt TDP. There are two four core i5 models, eight thread CPUs with a slight base clock bump and a single core boost of an extra three to 400 megahertz. So that will help. There are two six core 12 thread i7 CPUs. The 10750H will replace the popular 9750H and will give us a single core boost increase of fair 500 megahertz. And what I find perhaps more interesting is actually the eight core i7 1075H, which we should keep the same base clock as the current i9, but with a 300 megahertz single core boost. And finally, there is the i9 10980H that will dual core boost up to 5.3 gigahertz. Now here's the big kicker. This thermal velocity uh, to helping it, uh, the CPU boost up, you know, it needs to be at 50 degrees Celsius or below for the CPU. <laughs> I mean, when's that going to happen? My CPU currently stays at that at idle, never mind when it's gaming or anything like that. So it's fat chance of that happening. I mean, so certainly don't read too much into the hype. But what I certainly like, I mean, if you can afford the i9, is that they're promising a 4.4 gigahertz clock speed on all eight cores and that's going to be good and i'm actually going to simulate that test because of course i've got an i9 9900k in my uh, clevo laptop i'll set all cores there at uh, 4.4 gigahertz and rerun all those benchmark tests i did previously against the uh, the ryzen 7 4 800h uh, and we'll see actually how that gets on other notable benefits are the inclusion of wi-fi 6 and thunderbolt 3 and faster ram up to 2933 megahertz and more of it, up to a crazy 128 gigabytes. I also think what is good, um, the, uh, the the 8 core i7 10850H will have what's called adaptive tuning, which will you know automatically overclock the uh, the CPU using um, using the software up to about 400 uh, megahertz, depending on the thermal restraints of the laptop. And I think that's pretty neat. Now onto the new Nvidia lineup, new RTX Super and Max Q cards. What is good is that they are improving the price to performance. So for $699, you get a GTX 1650 compared to a GTX 1050. And what I like is an RTX 2060 for $999 and a 2070 for the price of a 2060. As for the super cards, they are bringing out the Super 2080 and the Super 2070. They are increasing the CUDA core count, but decreasing the clock speed to meet the thermal restraints of the laptop. But I wouldn't 100% believe their hype, to be honest. Now, on a desktop line, the supercards didn't see a huge increase. So I expect, you know, 5 to 10% improvement here, really, to be fair. Now, one thing I do like the look of is the RTX 2060. That will uh, can boost up to 115 watts. You know, that's great. And, you know, that'll put it on par to the 2070 Max P. bit like, you know, the electronics laptops I reviewed with their Electra Boost. Now, the thing is, will manufacturers you know, tell us which, which models have that. So I suggest that you do your research and watch reviews before you buy. Now, one good thing on the Max-Q line, NVIDIA is releasing their dynamic boost, a bit like AMD's uh, Smart Shift, where, you know, power, when you're gaming, power to the CPU um, will be decreased, and that extra power will go to the GPU to increase gaming performance there. Now, this is pretty nice, and of course, one good benefit, CPU power will go down and temperatures will get better too. I'm all for that. And of course, this is an optional uh, ability and you can actually turn it off in, an, in the NVIDIA control panel. NVIDIA says that the efficiency of the new Max Qs will actually be double that of the original Max Q line. That is, you know, like, you know, like the 1080 and the 1070 Max Q from a few years ago. And they do this by using uh, lower voltage GDDR6 memory. Now, also improved is their DLSS, that's a deep learning super sampling, which beforehand ran on the tensor cores, and it, to be honest, it was crap. 
Now in version 2, they have improved the algorithm and it runs in the regular shader cores, giving better frame rates and better visuals. And here is a shot of native 4K versus 1440p upscaled to 4K. It looks pretty good, right? And they also say that battery life will also be improved by up to about 20% using this. Now here's the big one, in my opinion. Nvidia will be having Optimus and G-Sync working together for a change, right? No more changing uh, by, you know, going to the BIOS or pressing a button to uh, activate the MUX switch. So you can manually change, uh, you know, between G-Sync and uh, a hybrid graphics. So you actually get your cake and eat it now. So you get the better battery life and you get also no screen tearing. Finally, I've been asking for this for years. Like I mentioned in my CES coverage, most OEMs will be keeping with the Intel and Nvidia for their new lineups. There are actually over 100 new models with 10 new RTX Studio laptops. Today, I want to mention what Gigabyte are bringing to the table that officially go on sale April the 15th. You will have the entry level Aorus 5 and 7 starting at $1300. These will have an RGB keyboard, 144Hz panel, Plenty of storage with a you know a single two and a half inch bay and two M.2 slots plus a 10th gen i7 and also a GTX 1660 Ti or an RTX 2060. Now I will be getting their current Aorus 5 to review. So you know when I get that in, I'll do all my tests and then I'll be able to compare it to the new one when that comes in. The Aero 15 and 17 will be basically upgraded with the new CPUs, an i7 and an i9, plus the RTX supercards. Now, pricing will start at $1,600 for the 15-inch Full HD panel and $1,900 for the OLED. The Aero 17 will start at $1,700 for the Full HD and $2,300 for the 4K. Now, the Aero line will continue to be focused on creators and ship with the creative drivers. Now, I saw the Aura 17 at PAX and it had a very nice mechanical keyboard. Now, this is their flagship gaming laptop and will be available in both the 17-inch and a 15-inch form factor. The 17X will have the new i9 and they will all have 240Hz panels and RTX supercards. Plus, they have WinForce cooling technology. And I think this was brought from their desktop graphics cards and this will help with the thermals. The Aorus 15G starts at $1,700 and the 17G at $1,800. And also the 17X will start at $2,400. It certainly promises to be an exciting year, doesn't it, uh, for, for laptops? About time, I think. Uh, so make sure if, you, if you're new to my channel, subscribe so you don't miss out on the reviews of the new laptops that are coming in and all the comparisons I will do against the current generation and also the recent AMD offerings. Thanks for watching. Bye now.